Hey everyone, Eric on Paper here, and in case you hadn't figured it out, I'm Eric. So we're going to be drawing uh, this today. It's a pretty cool drawing. Uh, it's of Ren Clayton Jones as Spider-Man from the Spider-Man 4 fan film that I'm going to be directing. And I'll talk a little bit about the movie and uh, how I uh, did the drawing. So when doing any portrait or face drawing, the first thing I do is draw an oval uh, horizontally directly in the center of the head, and then I draw another oval the same size right next to it, and then one on the other side. And what we're doing is we're setting up our eyes. The distance between both eyes is approximately one eye, so that's why I draw an eye in the center. Now from the center of your two eyes, I draw a point which connects to the center of the face, which is approximating the nose. Draw two lines down from the center of the eye, and then draw lines out from the nose, connecting everything that's roughly where the mouth is. Now this may change very slightly depending on whom you're drawing, so this is a good basic step when placing the head. And who we're drawing today is Bren Clayton Jones, also known as Spider-Man in the Spider-Man 4 fan film that I'm directing. And the request to do this drawing comes from a YouTube follower, Sonic Tron, and I hope you enjoy the final product. And though I don't try to draw in a particularly photorealistic style, um, I always try to have photo reference on hand of whatever subject I am drawing. Now, Bryn was kind enough to provide me with a selfie that I uh, told him to take, uh, referencing this angle, because I'm his director after all, he should uh, do what I tell him. Bryn, that's for you in case you're watching. So just compare proportions and keep looking back at your reference image. Now, uh, Bryn has a pretty strong jaw and I wanted to capture that, and I'm drawing with a pretty light lead in this mechanical pencil, and uh, the rubber eraser I'm using just uh, obliterates it, and you don't have to draw it perfectly the first time. So feel free to go back and adjust as many times as needed. The final result is what counts, not how long it took you to get there. And when I'm doing a portrait drawing or just referencing a real person, um, what I try to do is look at what really makes that person stand out from everybody so you don't get that artistic trap of same face syndrome, which is where you draw literally the same uh, man or woman's face again and again, because that's what's called a construct. It's what your mind immediately goes to. And I wanted to make this look like uh, Bryn, now after I get the shape of the eyes down, I then go in and draw the eyes themselves, because otherwise uh, Bryn just looks like an undead or possessed Spider-Man, which, as cool as it sounds, that is not going to be in the film, so if you really wanted to see that, I'm sorry to let you down. Since the rest of this part is just going to be me filling in details, I was going to talk a little bit more about the Spider-Man 4 fan film. One of my favorite things about the film is uh, the script. It's what really drew me to the project. And we have rehearsed several key scenes of the film, and I am very impressed with the actors uh, that Bryn has chosen for the project. And the thing is, normally as a director, I cast uh, the films that I make. So this was the first time that everyone had been hired uh, before I got there. And yes, in case you're curious, I am playing Alistair Smythe in the movie. And in my opinion, the film should have been called Spider-Man 4, The Rise of Smythe, but I'm the only one who has this opinion, so uh, it's not going to be a thing. But in all seriousness, um, we've rehearsed scenes at the Daily Bugle, and we've rehearsed all the scenes with uh, Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. And what I really love about the film and about the script in particular, is that there are many layers to it. Like, the Daily Bugle, for example, the film is set in 2009, 
uh, when the movie would have come out. So the Daily Bugle is contending with things like uh, digital overwhelming print, and it's a minor detail, but it's something that the actors play off of. It gives Jonah something to yell about, and I think is a tribute to how much research went into uh, the material. And in keeping with uh, Spider-Man, the Raimi trilogy tradition, Peter and Mary Jane's relationship is, of course, rocky and tumultuous. And I want to give a lot of credit to uh, Bryn and Leona Britt, uh, playing Peter and Mary Jane, respectively. They did a great job in their rehearsal. Uh, they both knew details about their characters. We were citing specific issues and story arcs in the comics that I wanted them to reference, and they knew it already. And what I liked particular about the Mary Jane character, who I think is one of the weaker aspects of the Raimi series, is that there's a lot more dimension and depth to her. She's not just a helpless damsel in distress. And now that that's looking like Bryn, or actually that's what Bryn wishes he looked like. Again, Bryn, that's if you're listening. Now we're going to go for inking, and I absolutely love this Japanese calligraphy pen. I got it at a Michael's. It gives a lot of freedom, and obviously this is time-lapsed, I can't ink that fast. Unless, of course, you commission me, then I totally ink that fast. But, um... The thing I love most about this is that it is very friendly with the Copic markers. Uh, no smearing, nothing like that. I had that problem with India ink. And I get some pretty fine lines, although not fine enough uh, for his webbing or costume detailing. And that's why I do all his muscles to give him kind of that old school look. And now I'm going in with the Copic ink pen set. And using those uh, to fill in his details, uh, his webbing, things like that. And I have grown up loving Spider-Man my entire life. My introduction to him was from the 90s animated show. And then I got to read all the comics, particularly the McFarlane ones. And I had he was one of the first characters I drew. And I've never liked drawing his webbing. It's always been such a pain. And now just going in with the Copic markers, and uh, one thing I found a tip from Todd Knock was to use an orange to color in some of the red. It just gives it more life and almost kind of a reflected look and uh, brightens up the character. And when I'm done with all of that, use cool grays for the shading and just use a white pencil over everything to add some highlights and uh, additional shading. Thank you, Sonictron, for the cool idea. And now some thoughts about the Spider-Man 4 film and some updates. I am playing Alistair Smythe. Uh, that's how I got involved with the project. Uh, I saw that there was a Spider-Man 4 film, uh, fan film being made and uh, with a casting notice. So I thought, I'm gonna send in my resume and a headshot. Uh, because I'm a big Spider-Man fan. Anything remotely close to it, I wanted to be involved with. And uh, at the time, I didn't have a reel, so I recorded myself uh, doing a monologue. And uh, Bryn and his creative team liked it, so they said, okay, do you want to be Alistair Smythe? And I said, yeah, let me, let me talk to my agent, yes. And things transpired where uh, he had seen some other short films I had made. Uh, the initial directors for the project had to uh, bow out for various reasons. And he liked what I did. And he said, hey, would you be interested in directing the film? And I said, well, let me, let me think about it. Yes. So then I looked at the script a second time, not as a performer, but as a director. I've been very impressed by everyone's dedication on this project. Um, everyone wants to make this not just a fan film, but just a really great film. It just happens to be a fan film. And there's a script for a teaser that we're going to shoot uh, very soon, as soon as 
uh, the social distancing laws in Washington State allow us to film because we don't want to endanger anybody. Uh, in the meantime, Brent has been working on costumes and props, and they are looking fantastic. Uh, VFX Valor and Brent are also collaborating on a Batman short that is really more just serving as a technical test for Spider-Man. And I have been doing shot lists and storyboards, and if you guys want to see some of the storyboards, and maybe I could talk about them, uh, let me know, and I'll do a special video on that. And if there's any characters you want to see on the show, or any characters you want to commission, feel free to reach out. I'd be happy to hear your request. And keep telling your stories.